God be with you. And welcome to joint services between McDougal United Church and Ogden United Church. Um, this is a Sunday where we are hoping those who needed rides could uh, get them from people who are willing to drive, and, and that has happened. And um, grateful for everybody who uh, volunteered. We had more drivers than we had people who were able to come today. But keep that in mind for the first Sunday of each month that uh, when we have communion, we want to make sure that everybody who wants to be here can be here. So if you're at home watching because you can't drive, next week, next month, first Sunday in November, which is also Remembrance Sunday, uh, there'll be a ride for you. We have a few announcements. Today is communion. Um, we are still using wafers and cups because of the COVID uh, protocols. So if you would like to come forward and Dana and I will be serving, you take a cup and then uh, you, you take part in the elements while you're at the table and then drop your cup in that basket and that's how the flow of communion works. You're also invited to light candles after that. Big, it's like an assembly line in some ways but hopefully it's a meditative time as well. Um, so if you're at home, you just need something to drink and something to eat, that's all. And so you can join in the service with us. All right, um, volunteers, there are, once we're back in, in person, you all remember what it was like. You were a greeter one day and you made coffee another day and you were an usher another day and all those things. And it's really hard to get in that rhythm again and some of you don't want to, totally fine. But we are having a difficult time getting people who will read or people who will uh, help with communion cleanup or people who will uh, sign up for coffee, which is the particularly difficult one. So um, if you, next month can help uh, clean up communion. That would be wonderful if you would sign up in the office. Jen is always happy to hear from you. Um, but also the coffee, making coffee and uh, helping to clean up. Today, Mary and Gordon Stevens made the coffee, but they could use some help cleaning up. So if after coffee you could do that, that'd be great. Again, it's an invitation, right? We do not want your attendance with us to be a burden to you in any way. But if you could help out, that would be great. Okay, this week, God at the Movies, Tuesday, 7.05 p.m., Life Mark. And after that, there'll be a discussion about the movie at Fairmont Drive and Southland Drive, which is different than what the email said. So um, if you want to join God at the Movies, Canyon Meadows Cinema, 7.05, and then a discussion afterwards with some coffee at Timmy's. Like, what could go wrong? It's a great place. Okay. Um, we are hoping to do a Charlie Brown Christmas for a kind of church dessert cookies Christmas um, event, first Sunday in Advent, which is the end of November. And we need some actors. We're looking for mostly younger people or people who like to pretend that they're young. But if you would like to be part of that, we actually have uh, auditions today. But after that, like if you can't do that today or you know someone, you have a, a child or a grandchild who'd like to be part of it, you can send in a tape, just a monologue, so that we know who's interested and where to place people. So that's a Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, it's only a half hour show, so it's not much. And uh, again, the end of November. Book discussion on well-aged, making the most of your platinum years. Uh, Marianne Medhurst is doing that. I know this is putting you on the spot, but could you stand up so if people don't know you, they can... <laughs> there are people who might not know you. That's Marianne. She's going to lead this book discussion on people who are living into your 80s. Uh, adjustments to that. And so... People who would like to join in that conversation, you can talk to Marianne, or you can call the office and let us know that you're interested in that. Uh, starts October 12th, so you still have a week or so. There's a homeschool group that's going to be meeting here at McDougal. Um, so if you homeschool kids, or you know people who homeschool kids, there's a weekly meetup group starting October 17th. And so cost is $80, register prior to October 12th, but it's great that we can 
partner uh, with this homeschool group to provide a place for homeschool kids to be together during the week. So that's good. And then, most of all, as I said, we um, have carpooling that happens on the first Sunday of every month. So like once a month, we want to make sure everybody who wants to come to church can come to church, just once a month. So we'll continue that for November. So keep thinking about... Um, uh, whether you can participate in that and whether you'd like to come. A few more announcements before we get to the ways to give. There is a box elder beetle infestation in the community, and many of you who've been through the building noticed that there were box elder beetles. I couldn't tell you what they look like because I don't know things like that, but many of you do, and they were in the church. So the church was... Uh, thanks to Barry, and volunteers came in and cleared out what they could and then sealed some of the doors because it's coming in from outside. So some of the doors won't be able to be used except in case of emergency for a bit. But we believe that it has solved the problem and if there's any residual issues, that that, that will clear soon. So uh, just so you know, because we were getting phone calls about that, um, Bill Weaver is at Central United today. He was the presbytery rep for Central for calling their minister, and they have called a minister, but he's coming from Zambia, I think, or somewhere in Africa, and is not here yet. So Bill is the uh, person, when they have communion, who, who um, presides. So he's at Central today, he, uh, and so we pray for Central community and their new call, and Bill as he's there for communion. And just one other thing, we had our blanket ceremony here on Friday night, and we had about 60 people here. Many I didn't know from the community, and lots of you were here, and it was a wonderful um, walk through the relationship between uh, settlers and the indigenous people. Tony Snow led it, and uh, then we had a great beef stew, and it was a wonderful time. So I thank all the people who were part of that and uh, to bring off that event. And that leads us to the ways to give, because things like that don't happen in our community unless um, you support us. And some of you support us with your time and help out, and that's all you can do, and that's okay. And some of you have some extra cash that you can support, or you know, offerings that you can support us financially. Whatever way you come to this place, you're welcome. And if you would like to give, there's a basket at the back, I believe, and there's online opportunities. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, mostly for the way that we hold and carry each other. The McDougal and Ogden are beautiful communities that uh, ensure that everybody has a place at the table. So thank you. We're going to start our service, and you can remain seated for this part before we light our Christ candle with a song called Dona Nobis Pacham, which means give us peace. It's a round, actually. So we're going to sing it all in unison first, and then Jen will start, Peggy and I are second, and Justin is third, and you can choose to sing with any one of us, or all of us, or skip around. But this is Dona Nobis Pacham.
loss piece. It is a prayer for all of us. And it's not just peace in places where there are hot wars, although we do remember those who are struggling just to find safety. And it's not just peace in our hearts so that we feel like we can handle the world by breathing. It's peace with justice for our planet in this season of creation, for all that dwell on this earth, for all life that is. So we light this candle and we remember that Jesus calls us to a way of peace and justice and that God is with us always. Amen. So I invite you to stand. Today is that, well, the fourth is St. Francis, like the um, festival St. Francis Day, right? So a lot of pet blessings happen in Anglican and Catholic churches. Uh, someday we'll do it too, just don't know how to figure out how to keep the pets in the service. Uh, but I, I was thinking, oh, I must mention St. Francis, and I thought, oh, we should sing Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, and I thought, well, that's more Remembrance Day. And I had chosen this hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, just because it fits. And then I looked, what has St. Francis written? And lo and behold, All Creatures of Our God and King. So there you go. It was meant to be. Stand with us as we sing that together. Sun with blue. 
Please be seated. We know that we all come from different places. We are together as humanity in different phases of our lives and different stages of our lives with different struggles and triumphs and joys. And yet, we are one community. We are one people across the planet. And we are the people who have decided to follow in the way of Jesus to make the world a more just and peaceful place to love creation and our planet in ways that are sustainable. And so we come in this season of creation where our emphasis is on the planet, our relationships with each other, and our relationships with other life on the planet. And we come humbly. And so in our centering prayer, we center ourselves in that space of justice and peace for the whole planet. I will do the... um, yellow, and you can read the black. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament firmament proclaims her handiwork. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Heavenly Father, who has been present through the ages, as we gather to call ourselves into mindfulness of the sacred gift of time you grant us, We ask that you help us feel your presence among us now. Call to us that we may hear your voice in beauty, in witness, in song, and in prayer. For even in a world fraught with signs of destruction, we know that when we open ourselves to the awe of your creation before a mountain, a sparkling lake, a hummingbird, we may yet hear your still, small voice. We are too busy for awe. We know too much to be in awe. We are too jaded for awe. We ignore the spiritual gift of awe. Allow us to hear you whisper to us when we doubt your goodness and despair of hope. Nobody is perfect. We are all flawed and yet beautiful human beings. And we all fall into bad relationships with our planet or with each other and we mess up. And yet here is the great gift. God is always calling us to wholehearted living, to live in relationship with others where peace and justice prevail. So even when we're not quite there, and we never are, we are loved and forgiven. That is the gospel. That is what keeps us here Sunday morning after Sunday morning, hoping that we can build that world that God has set before us. May it be so. So we pass the peace, which is just that sign that says, I'm different than you, I have different circumstances, I'm older, I'm younger, I'm richer, 
I'm poor, all those things, but yet still we pass the peace of Christ, and that's what unites us. We are not yet moving around. Uh, we're still being uh, sensitive to COVID. So how we do it is we grab our hearts and say, the peace of Christ be with you. And we extend our arms with peace to the world and say, and also with you. And you can twirl around all you want uh, to pass the peace. And uh, I invite you to do so. So if you want to stand and we say, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. So pass the peace to each other. Peace to you and also to you. And we can just remain standing as we sing this uh, hymn that I, I know a lot of you loved from your childhood, All Things Bright and Beautiful. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Each little bird that sings, God made their glowing colors, God made their tiny wings, the purple-headed mountains, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. do at this time, we're going to go to the table and share the meal that God has provided for us in which we know and understand our relationship to the divine. As we do this, I talk about my own frailties here. The font on this is painfully small, but I will try to get these out in our prayers of the people this morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Reverend uh, Dana Cox. I'm one of the ministers here, along with Joanne. And uh, I, I find myself 
always coming to this space in such awe of the people and all the things that we do together. And in considering the people, we recognize that so many of us during this time, after COVID and and the world itself, can be filled with such great amounts of anxiety. So many things seem to overwhelm us. So many ways our lives just seem so fraught with activities and, and actions. But this time together is a time that we can find sanctuary and try to leave some of these worries and concerns behind. Our reading today, which we'll be getting to in a minute, is from Matthew, and it most certainly gives voice to this concern in ways we can approach it. As I consider all that's been going on in this church and we think about some of the specific people, we know that from Ogden, the Jeanette is moving into hospital, uh, hospice care this week. We will be lifting up prayers for her as well as another Ogden member and Shirley B. Uh, Ron and Shirley are home from the Maritimes and not feeling so well. Shirley was not feeling so well. So she has gone to the hospital and is awaiting some test results. Uh, We would also uplift this morning, too. We'll be uplifting Colin, uh, Colin, who is part of Ann Gardner's adult program for the developmentally delayed. In five years, they have been meeting at McDougal together. celebration of life will be on Wednesday. I forgot to put that in. Sorry, Dana. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of you have been here on a Thursday, and Ann Gardner has this uh, group of, ki- of adults who have been through uh, programs for people who experience developmental delays, and she has had a wonderful relationship with them, and one of the really important members of that group, Colin, who has been uh, at events at McDougal too, died this week. So we remember. Anne sent me that message yesterday. As you know, Anne is, is also in hospital awaiting treatment. Um, but we have people who come inside this building for various different things who feel like this is a home. And so Colin, even though he has not been at Sunday morning services, is still a member of this community. His uh, celebration of life is on Wednesday. So we remember his family and Anne, who has been um, his teacher for a long time. Thank you. Yes, that was an important thing to not to have missed there. It's very sad. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. No, in the prayers that we uplift, and even those that are uplifted somewhat clunkily, we all know that God understands, and they translate more than well, more than perfectly. I invite us now as we prepare ourselves and we think about those people who, who we've just named, that we collect ourselves into a place where we can uplift in our, not just in our minds, but in our hearts, our prayers for the people this day. Let us pray. Holy God, in a time of creation awareness, we pause this day to give thanks for and to be in awe of the wonders that surround us. We give thanks for the blessings of this earth, nestled like a speck of dust in the great universe, and at the same time, home to all known life and beauty. From newborn infant to wise and elder, from the amoeba, to the antelope, from plankton to the great whale. Lord, we give thanks for all of your creation. And we give thanks also this day that we celebrate a sense of St. Francis and his connection to the animals. We give thanks this day for the companionships we have with so many variety of domesticated animals. For so many of us, this love shared between a pet and its owner, fills so many hearts with joy. 
all the celebration of our connectedness as being creatures of one creator, we give thanks this day as we wonder so often at their exuberance and love and their greeting of our pets. Lord, we also pray for all the animals that are neglected and treated in manners that disrespect them as fellow creatures. Lord, we ask that you soften the hearts of those who cannot see the worth of their creation, who do not celebrate an understanding of them as being part of your plan for all of us to celebrate. Lord, we also uplift prayers of lament at this time, at the desecration of the sacred gifts you have given us, the impact we have had with our habits on the entire earth and the environment. We mourn the species now extinct from overhunting and loss of habitat. Lord, we ask that you help us to remove, to repent in our ways and live in harmony with earth, our mother, and sun and moon, our brother and sister. Hear our prayers this day for the breath of life and that we may use our health, our voices, and our lives to stand in solidarity with those places and people under threat and siege due to climate change or other violence. Lord, on this day, we uplift prayers for those who suffer due to leaders small of stature and heart and hardened hearts. We ask, O Lord, that you hear our prayers for the people in Ukraine and all the people across the planet who are fighting, fighting, Lord, just to have the freedoms we so often, often forget, often take for granted. Lord, we also uplift prayers for all those people in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and South Carolina and the whole eastern seaboard in Florida as hurricanes, too, wreak havoc on the world this past week. We ask, oh God, as they collect their lives and they put together their shattered pieces, they build again with an understanding of you as a foundation and that they feel your love there with them during their time of struggle. Lord, finally, we lift up and we turn to our own circle of community, rejoicing at the love of friends and family, rejoicing at the love found in this congregation gathered here in this sanctuary and those who are not with us at their homes as they celebrate joys in their lives. But at the same time, Lord, we are called to mind all those who cannot be with us in this circle today, all those who will not be sharing at the table, those who are in particular need this day, Lord, we uplift prayers again that surely, that Shirley's test will come back in ways that allow her to know what had ailed, what had ailed her. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that these, these, this illness be something that can be treated. Lord, we ask that you bless also the hands of all those providing care for Shirley this day. And Lord, we also give uplift prayers this morning for Jeanette as she moves into a new home. Lord, as she settles into this hospice, which may likely well be the last place she resides, God, have her to feel your presence with her now as we pray for her and uplift her in prayers. And Lord, also hear our prayers as we know Colin has now crossed over, taking the journey that we will all take at some point. And as he is in the small of your hand, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers of support for his family and for all those who know, knew, and loved him. Lord, we also find ourselves this day praying for, praying for, all those who are not at the table 
to share with us at this communion this day. Lord, we ask for those who are not here who have long endured pain and for those whose lives bear great and deep sorrow, we ask that you hear our prayers for them this day. For those who are both gathered here and for those, again, at home, we ask that you recognize that all prayers cannot be lifted up with words. And now we will uplift all the names that have been unnamed in a moment of silent meditations of our hearts. Holy God, we, we ask that our prayers and our intentions be heard and that they may be added to the mending of the world. We ask, oh God, at this time you strengthen us with solidarity, the solidarity of purpose as we share together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So today, again, is Communion Sunday. Today has got a lot going on. It's the awe of creation. It's St. Francis. Um, it's uh, a lot of bells and whistles. And it's the communion that, again, sharing is a sharing of the table. For those who are at home, I invite you to prepare yourselves and recognize that uh, we have elements here of bread and juice. Um, and, but at home, uh, even the ordinary, as Bill likes to say, can be the extraordinary. It can be done with crackers to, to juice to, uh, as Bill says again, fresca and triscuits. So feel free to recognize that you are part of this service as well, as, long as, as well as everyone gathered here. You know, as I, I gather here this morning, I was, again, thinking this... I was worried a lot about service. I don't usually worry so much, but this whole service has been me focusing on this idea of anxiety. Again, letting, letting go and letting God, as they say. And whenever I think of no worries, I, I can't help one think of Alfred E. Newman cartoons, What Me Worry, the, the fellow in the back, right? But I also, I can remember, and, I, I, and Jake back there with some of the boomers might not appreciate this, but... I think about the term no worries. No worries is a term we hear all the time. Someone will do something and then the response is no worries. And I was reminded of a, of a time when me and my daughter were having uh, a lunch together and we had a server. It feels appropriate at the table to talk about service with my daughter at a table. In any event, my daughter sat down and almost immediately knocked over a glass of water he gave us, or she gave us. And as the waitress was patting up the table dry, she looked at my daughter and said, no worries. And I thought, well, that's nice. Now, this was a long time ago, and I really hadn't heard the term no worries before that much at this point. This must have been 10, 12 years ago. So later on in the meal, and again, I thought that was really nice, no worries. No worries, good. And then later on in the meal, my daughter, after the waitress had suggested she have a certain meal, my daughter was eating it, the waitress was around. She said, my daughter to the waitress said, oh, this is really, really good. Thank you, thank you for the suggestion. And again, the waitress said, no worries. Now to me, that sort of introduced a little bit of worry. Well, wait up, I wasn't worried. <laughs> But you suggested I said it was good, and now you say, no worries. What is that? 
And throughout the meal, I then noticed over and over and over and over all the times where she might have said, you're welcome. She said, no worries. Now, as I tell the story, I'm worried I've told this story to too many of you, or maybe I've even told it up here already. But here's the part where I think it kind of morphs into the table, where we can take it to the table. Because as much as I bristle against this idea when someone says something to me where I feel like the proper response, again, the cashier gives you money back after you've, you know, had an exchange, and you go, oh, thank you, and she says, no worries, you count your change again, right? Um, again, we live in such a world that just seems to me that that just introduces more anxiety unnecessarily. So I invite you to just think about that. But as I was writing this and preparing for this and thinking about this, I realized, you know what? You know when it really does apply both you're welcome and no worries? The place that you answer to that is at this table. When you come to this table, we say it every Sunday. All are worthy. All are welcome. You are welcome. Our readings today remind us also that this table, this banquet that represents what the banquet that was, the banquet that is now, and the banquet that will be, allows us also to come to this table, you guessed it, with no worries, to leave them, to leave them as you come here. So in a few minutes, we will be sharing the meal. I invite you. Maybe, you know, it's, I'm going to talk about how really hard this is to keep that no worries when it says in our reading today that, you know, that worry will not change a thing, which is true. But in this time, it is hard not to worry. But I ask you, I invite you, as you come to this table, as we share the meal in a few minutes, maybe you can just take one worry, one worry you have on your heart, and let it go. Just for the moment as you're sharing the meal, think that one thing and intentionally come up to the table and say, as you hear God's, as you're giving thanks to God, you hear not only your welcome, but no worries. And share the meal of our Lord. Let us now prepare ourselves to center for this meal by by singing a hymn. Oh, God. 
bless and prosper this meal. Bless and prosper this fellowship that justice and love may be our common witness of Christ together. On the night before the day of total darkness and deceit, Jesus, after giving thanks to the Father, broke the bread. And in doing so, he then gave it to his disciples. And he told them, when you partake of this element, do so in remembrance of me. It is through the broken bread that we can all participate in the body of Christ. Similarly, but at the end of the meal, After again giving thanks to the Father, Jesus poured the wine in the cup. And he said, this is my blood spilled for you. This is my blood spilled for many. When you partake of this, do so in remembrance of me. Truly, this is the cup of blessing. This is the cup of the new covenant. And again, at Ogden and McDowell United, we recognize that All are worthy, all are welcome, and worry-free. The table has been set for you. We invite you, just as a logistical matter, to, as we share in the meal today, we invite you, if you're possible, to come down the center aisle. Me and Joanne will be serving the meal. um, And afterwards, just kind of go out like that. It's funny, this would have been much more difficult if we had animals. we hopefully, hopefully y'all will follow that, but again, we won't be like herding cats again through the middle and out. Um, I invite you also to recognize if you're unable to come to the table, Joanne will bring the meal to you. The table has been set for all. Um, I invite you now to again prepare yourselves to share in the meal of our Lord.
Holy God, we give thanks for the gifts that we have just received and through which we have known Christ's presence. May the blessings of this table strengthen our faith. May it increase our generosity. And on this World Communion Sunday, may it unify all our hearts that justice and love would be the matters of our witness of Christ together. Amen. I invite now all those who are young and young at heart to go with Nick uh, this morning. Uh, and we've got a couple stragglers out there, and we've got Kaylee and Ace back there. Nick will take them and, uh, down to the art studio for a quick little lesson. Thank you. And I invite us now to sing. Our next hymn, More Voices 30, it's a song of praise to the maker. Yeah, right? <laughs> Our scripture today is from Matthew. I need it on the screen if I can. No one can serve two superiors. You will either hate one and love the other or be attentive to one and despise the other. You cannot give yourself to God and money. That's why I tell you not to worry about your livelihood. What you are to eat or drink or use for clothing isn't life more than just food. I got to tell you, that's a hard one for me. Isn't the body more than just clothes? Also a hard one. Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet our God in heaven feeds them. Aren't you, aren't you more important than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add a moment to your lifespan? And why be anxious about clothing? Learn a lesson from the way the wildflowers grow. They don't work. They don't spin, 
Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in full splendor was arrayed like one of these. If God can clothe in such splendor the grasses of the field, which bloom today and are thrown on the fire tomorrow, won't God do so much more for you? You who have so little faith, stop worrying then over questions such as, what are we to eat or what are we to drink or what are we to wear? Those without faith are always running after these things. God knows everything you need. Seek first God's reign and God's justice, and all these things will be given to you besides. Enough of worrying about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Today has troubles enough of its own. May we take these words to heart as we consider the way of Jesus. Amen. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in God's sight. So that's a pretty familiar scripture reading. And on this, Communion, World Communion Sunday, St. Francis Sunday, All of Creation Sunday. I'm going to try to, in a, very, um, in a very structured yet abbreviated manner, give you a message that tries to touch on all those things. And by the way, I love Sarah and the images she picks as we consider the, lily in, in the, uh, the, the, the lilies in the field. This is such a wonderful image to sort of represent us as lilies in the field. But it is sort of funny, like you have... Talk about the, uh, you know, it's not about food or clothing. Those kind of give you a little pause. Yeah, it's, um, this, is, this, is a, this is a hard one to, to sort of wrestle with. And there's all kind of ways that more traditional churches wrestle with it. But I tell you, when they, you know, again, lilies don't have uh, student loans. Lily, lilies don't have children they're worried about. There's a lot of things that lilies don't have to worry about for many reasons. But we do, and quite often we do. And again, in this World Communion Sunday, we remember that we are fed and we are taken care of and the things that we need to be fed by. So today, I'm going to be talking about um, a blind dog and blinders. And again, I'm going to try to be somewhat abbreviated in my message, but as I, because this could be quite the message. One of the, one of the reading, uh, one of the hymns lifted up the idea of um, radical amazement. And that was actually first coined by Abraham Joshua Herschel. He was a noted uh, Jewish uh, philosopher of religion. And again, he talked about how there is so much life in abundance on this world. There is so much ways that just life itself springing forth from nothing is a uniqueness and something that should inspire awe. Oh, that's the, again, the other thing, the awe of creation. When you feel that awe, you can recognize something beyond yourself and it speaks to you somehow in ways. And again, I think we can learn those lessons of awe and not worry from our four-legged friends. Now, this might not translate to all of you who don't see pets quite the same, but I think those, some people have that same connection to the land, perhaps. So if you're not a pet owner, maybe there's a garden that you understand this by. But you learn things. You learn things if you pay attention to your pets. I had a dog named Nimbus. Now, Nimbus was about 85 pounds, a big old shepherd kind of dog. Um, Nimbus, by the way, not just the cloud, but in art history, uh, the nimbus is those glowing things you see around the saints. Those are called nimbuses. So my dog Nimbus, who was brought to us on Christmas morning as a present for my little ones and celebrated by my children, um, they had gone off to school. And when they gone, went off to school, I noticed that Nimbus started bumping into things. Nimbus started having problems, and I realized that Nimbus had gone blind, right? She got really sick, and then when she came through the sickness, she couldn't see anymore. And again, blindness, we all know, has a variation. It's on a spectrum. Things get a little blurry for some, and some people it's opaque black. So 
I think that Nimbus maybe had a little spit of seeing, but for the most part, she was completely blind. She would walk off of steps, she would bump into walls. It's funny because I decided not to move just because I didn't want the dog to have to figure out a new furniture and a new, new setup. But the thing about this is, and this is going to, I think, resonate with any of you who have had pets, this didn't seem to bother or worry Nimbus at all. She took it so in stride. She just moved through her life a little slower and a little more dependent on me as I tried to be a good master to her. And, you know, anyone who's had a dog and had relationships with other pets, and again, there are so many animals, I just, I'm I'm not trying to leave cats out, I just haven't had that experience so much. But with dogs, you do feel this sort of, they're looking at you, they're wanting you to direct them, they're wanting you to, they're wanting to feel your presence with them. Nimbus, once she was blind, never slept further than 10 feet away from me after that. So as I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about how this kind of connection we feel is something that goes sort of to that awe of just, not just creation, but all the ways that we are so interconnected, not just to each other, but again, to animals and and to all creation. And I think sometimes through our hubris and our ignorance and the fact that we live such busy lives, we, we are sort of blinded to that fact and we forget about it. And I'm going to talk about two other kinds of blinders because one of uh, my intern, who I like to call the kid, talked to me. Nick is who I'm talking about, the fellow who's downstairs. Um, I told him I was going to say this, so I'm not like talking about him because he left the room. But he was talking to me about how he would hate to preach this because he was told that if you were in a more conservative tradition, if you ever had worry, then you didn't have faith. You should think about that. And so if someone came up and was worried with something, oh, no, it's a sign of weakness. You're not connecting to God. You're worried? Have faith. Why should you worry, even for a minute? And so to me, again, I think it's give us this day our daily bread. We cannot just dismiss worries like that. To me, that felt a little bit like blinders too, that you wouldn't prepare, you wouldn't be focused, you wouldn't, you know, your your worry would be so out of the picture that you would almost have to suppress it, I would think, or deny it, or say you want worry just because you wouldn't be called out for not having faith. So that's a type of blinders on. But as I sort of tried to to bring my message to a close here, I, I, I invite you to recognize that again, that's not how we view. I don't believe most of us would view it if you have any worries. That means you have no faith and you should feel ashamed. Worry is something that's maybe even more baked into our world now today than ever because, again, part of the blinders that used to be of the past, where it wouldn't be so bad, you were were blinders through geography. A A thousand years ago, you only knew what was going on in your neck of the woods. You didn't understand there was a war in Ukraine. You didn't understand there was a famine in Africa. You didn't understand all these things. So again, it feels like for the first time in history, we are in a world where there are no blinders as Christians who seek to understand God through questions, through questioning things. And again, to me, if, if there's sort of three ways to, to, to learn from a blind dog, We can't be blinded by a a sense of faith that so dismisses all our worries or makes us feel ashamed if we are ever worried. We can't be blinded in a way, which I think a lot of people are, who don't have faith, who decide to not be curious, to decide not to be in awe. The gentleman I mentioned before, the... um, Joshua, Abraham Joshua Herschel said that it's, it's only in wonder that true creativity comes into being. It's only in wonder that true creativity comes into being. And so as we are in awe and wonder of God, that's where we can be truly creative. It's not found in fear and it's not found in worry. And again, as I close up, I think about my dog who would actually still, once he was blind, would go swimming a little bit in the Bow River. 
because she loved swimming before. And she would go out just far enough on a leash where I could call her back. So I invite you, my prayer for us this day, as we consider a God that allows us not to worry, that Jesus and this long part of the beatitude, that's part of the Sermon on the Mount or the Sermon on the Plain, if you will, he's telling people, what will worry bring you? And the truth is nothing. Worry is a cracked bowl. It holds no rice. So again, my prayer for us this day is that we will allow ourselves to be in wonder, to allow ourselves to be more curious than judgmental, to allow ourselves to even be daring enough like a blind dog to swim in the currents of the world that surround us, having faith, knowing that God is there for us. And though we can't bleed away all our worry, truly the biggest worries, when we take them through the eyes of a blind dog, can be washed away and can be a sponge from our hearts. That's my prayer for us this day. Amen. Now I invite you to share with us our last hymn as we stand together and sing. Voices United 296, this is God's wondrous world. This morning, I invite you to go forward feeling God's love around you. Go forward as we share in the fellowship hall and just as a nuts and bolts message, any parents who might have let their children go downstairs, Nick knows that you might be in fellowship. We're going to give you that extra little cushion of time alone, and we again, again, invite you to all come over into the fellowship hall and share coffee uh, that Dick and Shirley has prepared for us this morning so generously. Gordon Mary. Gordon Mary? I thought it was Dick and Shirley. No, Gordon Mary. Awesome. My bad. <laughs> Gordon Mary. I did that so they would get extra praise. That's all I did. I made a mistake. And then I thought the list said, well, whatever. Um, in any event, again, if they go forward out into the world, do so with uh, a sense of the abundance of creation all around you. We live in, in this fall, a, a beautiful fall so far. Enjoy it. Enjoy the mountains. Enjoy the spectacle of the Rockies. Enjoy the fresh air as you breathe it in. Enjoy a sense of wonder in all God's creatures. And even those bugs who might be swarming in the room, those are part they of aren't. the... They They aren't? <laughs> I saw some in the kitchen this morning, but I hate to keep going back and forth with you on that. (laughs) Bugs are no bugs. We hope to see you in Fellowship Hall and share the abundance of of Christ's love with each other. And also, as you go forward this day, may the blessings of Jesus 
who announce God's righteousness of the creator who fills earth with beauty and of the spirit who nurtures all. Bless, inspire, and empower you this day that you feel God's love so much that you cannot help but share with all those you meet as you go forward into the world. We give this with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.